Hi, welcome. I'm here to talk about uh, installing capacitors into motor branch circuits. Right, so this is a pretty special application as an electrician, but not uncommon at all. So what we would do is we would take a capacitor, uh, which has a leading power factor, right, uh, leading VARs. We would install it into a motor branch circuit, and those leading VARs cancel out the lagging VARs of our motor, right? So we are doing power factor correction to a motor branch circuit, right? The goal of that being to reduce our line current on the motor branch circuit conductors. So we have three situations we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about installing a capacitor bank or a capacitor before the motor branch circuit disconnect. Uh, we're going to talk about after the motor branch circuit disconnect. And we're going to talk about after the motor controller. So starting down here, if I wanted to install a capacitor on the line side or the supply side, right, this would be my source over here, uh, there's no special rules for that. We're just installing a capacitor bank. Because in this situation, I can run this capacitor bank whether the motor's on or not. So we'd be sizing our conductor, our overcurrent, our disconnecting means, and our discharge resistor based off the standard rules like we always would. Uh, we would require that discharge resistor because if I were to open this disconnect, I need somewhere for that capacitor to discharge the stored charge. So nothing special there. Uh, moving on, if I go on to the, or when I'm there, all my current on the supply side would be power factor corrected. So I would only see a reduced current at my source, basically. Uh, as I move on and I talk about installing a capacitor, now on the load side of the motor branch circuit disconnect. So here I am, load side of the branch circuit disconnect. I install a capacitor here. What that's going to do is effectively I'm going to have a reduced current on the line side or the supply side of this capacitor. So all the current that way would be power factor correct. So I have a couple special requirements. Uh, one thing is it tells me that I do not require a separate uh, disconnecting means for my capacitor. If I want to turn my capacitor off, I just open my motor branch circuit disconnect. Uh, it also tells me that my disconnect, my overcurrent, and my conductor of the motor branch circuit, so my disconnect, overcurrent, conductor for my motor branch circuit, don't need to be any larger. The reason is, is the only thing that's going to change is my current is going to be smaller, therefore I don't need a larger disconnect over current conductor. Now the big thing is sizing this conductor. We want to adequately size that conductor to make sure that it's going to be protected by this overcurrent device. So it tells us we need to meet the requirements of 26208. So this conductor would have to be at least 135% the rating of the capacitor, just like we would for any capacitor. It also tells us you would have to be at least one third the branch circuit motor, the motor branch circuit conductor. So if I knew what my motor branch circuit conductor was, which I would have to, this conductor has to be at least 135% the rating of the capacitor and has to be at least one third the allowable ampacity of the branch circuit conductor. So just like a tap conductor for a capacitor bank, I'm sizing it the same way here. Um, we do also require a discharge resistor here because if I open that disconnect and this is open, I need somewhere for that capacitor to discharge its stored charge. The last situation is now installing a capacitor on the load side of a motor controller. So this would be my motor controller, my contactor. Now I'm on the load side of that. I'm still on the load side of the motor circuit disconnect. So all of those rules still apply. I don't need another disconnect. I don't need to increase the size of the disconnect overcurrent or conductor. This conductor has to be at least 135% the rating of the capacitor. It also has to be at least one third the rating of the branch circuit overcurrent. When I install my capacitor here, I am power factor correcting everything on the line side of that capacitor. What that means is my overload devices now need to be reduced. Because they used to be based on the FLA of the motor, now they're a little bit too big because now I'm seeing a reduced current. So now when I'm sizing my overloads, I need to use my new reduced FLA or my new reduced line current and then do the 115 or 125%
based on my service factor when sizing that. And check out my other video for info on sizing the overload protection. Um, so we also cannot install a capacitor so big that we would exceed a unity power factor. Uh, we do not require that overcurrent for the capacitor. We can't use any special starting means for this motor. We just want a basic full voltage starter. And also very importantly, we no longer require that discharge resistor. We don't require a discharge resistor. 26222 tells us that when this opens, we're considering the motor adequate. So what will happen is the capacitor will discharge all its stored charge and it will dissipate through the windings of the motor. So we don't require that extra discharge resistor. So kind of three different applications, nothing too wild. Um, just paying attention to those sub rules in 26218. Thanks for watching.